what's up guys this is kd cloudy and if you follow me at all or if you know me in real life then you probably know that i'm kind of a huge av nerd and i'm obsessed with movie related formats like imax hdr and dolby vision dolby atmos why you might ask i'm a nerd now when i first got the one plus 8 pro obviously i was pumped out of my mind to test the dolby atmos feature I was really curious about how it works, what types of files it works on, do I get the spatial audio effect through those set of uh, two speakers, uh, you know, OnePlus 8 Pro. And after testing it, using it, I have to say I was kind of disappointed. Now, this is not another OnePlus rant video. This does not only apply to OnePlus smartphones. This is basically applicable to all Android devices which come with that Dolby Atmos branding. So that includes the Razer phone, the Samsung Galaxy S10 and all that. So yeah, now, I kind of made a similar video last year uh, with the MacBooks when they got built-in Dolby Atmos support for like speaker playback uh, with Mac OS 10.15 Catalina. And I tried it, it worked pretty good. And uh, coming back to Dolby Atmos for smartphones, it's kind of a different story. So is it a gimmick? Is it snake oil? Well, let's find out. Now, firstly, we need to understand what does it actually mean when a product's box comes with that Dolby logo stamped on it? What does it actually mean? What does it signify? Well, Dolby's main USP is their proprietary audio codecs. They're an audio company. They make some proprietary audio codecs, which the company companies using it uh, need to pay license fees for. So their codecs are Dolby Digital, AC3, Dolby Digital Plus, EAC3, and there's also that lossless codec for Blu-rays called Dolby True HD. And movies and TV shows can mix their audio content in uh, 5.1, 7.1, and these numbers basically mean how many speakers you have around you. And they can export that file in their mastering software and package it into one of these audio codecs. So yeah, all of this, which I talked about, 7.1, 5.1, and uh, AC3, EAC3, all of these things can be packaged and uh, bundled and put under the umbrella of uh, the Dolby Audio brand name. Uh, so yeah, uh, whenever Realme launches their next budget uh, soundbar or you take a look at the TVs when it says Dolby Audio, now you know what it means. Now let's move on to Dolby Atmos. Dolby Atmos is their, uh, this is Dolby's latest trademark slash technology where sound, when it's mastered in their mastering software, it's basically in the form of objects so that you know, sounds can easily flow through between speakers. And also that number we talked about, it adds a third digit to it to represent the number of overhead speakers. So Dolby Atmos, uh, it has object based audio and also supports overhead sounds so that when, like if you're watching a movie and suddenly a plane goes over your head, you can actually feel that when you're in the theater and, uh, the, uh, formats it's, it could be encoded in is EAC3 JOC which stands for joint object coding and for blu-rays like i said it supports dolby true hd so yeah, we've got the basic definitions out of the way uh now you might have got the impression that not just dolby atmos but the concept of surround sound is actually ideal and intended for like big spaces with dedicated speaker setups like theaters and even home theater setups so what does it mean when you put something as complex and something as was supposed to be immersive like Dolby Atmos and put it in a smartphone with just two tiny speakers. <sighs> well, firstly, it's kind of a brand thing. But secondly, uh, let's talk about virtualizers. Virtualizers are a piece of software written either in the media player or in the natively in the OS level itself. And these basically emulate that uh, 3D audio effect or a stereo effect uh, when you're just wearing headphones or just have a set of two speakers and that's how MacBooks do it. Apple has built in virtualizers in the OS itself and, and I'll get to that in a bit. Uh, and that's how you're able to get that spatial audio effect when you're watching something on the Apple TV app. Now, what about smartphones? We have taken a look at the MacBook. What about Android smartphones? What about the Razer Phone 2? What about the OnePlus 8 Pro, the 7T and even some of those Samsung Galaxy phones? Well, the answer is unclear. And I say unclear because firstly, 
there is basically no way of watching Dolby Atmos encoded content legally on Android. Google Play Movies does not support it. YouTube does not support it. And if you do download movies, Blu-ray rips, if you know what I mean. And if you have Dolby Atmos encoded tracks on those, if you try to play that on VLC, which I did, I basically did not feel a difference. And partly because VLC has their own encoders and decoders and basically any file will play regardless of what kind of phone you have. So I am not really sure what point of Dolby Atmos actually is. Now the only app which supports Dolby Atmos playback is Tidal. So yeah, Dolby Atmos music. So I downloaded an APK and uh, made an account, got a subscription using a VPN. And I listened to a couple of tracks and it was bad. It was really, really bad. I mean, it's kind of going for that increased soundstage uh, feel. I mean, there was definitely a virtualizer at play uh, built into a title, but the mixing itself is really, really bad. I mean, like the punchiness of a song is totally gone. And I was listening con continuously uh, to Apple Music and Spotify and Tidal back to back. And Apple Music and Spotify are so, so much better. I don't even know what Dolby Atmos music, why does it even exist? But yeah, getting back to the point, I mean, it's like, as you might have guessed, it's kind of a disappointment. Now, you might be asking me that, what about those Dolby Atmos demo videos? You'll find tons of them on YouTube. You'll find them on their official website. And they even bundle some of that in uh, Dolby Atmos branded devices. Well, those are binaural audio based files. Remember how I told you how virtualizers create and emulate that spatial audio effect, that 3D audio effect? Well, binaural audio is basically a pre-processed version, a pre-virtualized version when you're actually mastering the audio itself. So Dolby's mastering suite actually offers uh, an export option where you just flip that binaural audio switch and it just exports out a clean audio Dolby Atmos file, which gives you that stereo effect with any pair of headphones, with any device which has a set of stereo speakers. And binaural audio as a concept itself is just independent and irrelevant of Dolby. They don't own that thing. It's just, you can create that with basically any open codec and that's how YouTube is able to process that. So, I mean, the demo files can be used on any device with or without Dolby Atmos. Dolby Atmos devices do not play back Dolby Atmos content offline. There is no legal way of watching Dolby Atmos content. So what gives? Well, an equalizer basically. <laughs> so an equalizer basically, if you don't know already, it's just a it's an equalizer. I mean, you can adjust the bass frequencies, the mids and the highs, and just tune the sound exactly how you want it. And the, with the OnePlus 8 where you don't even get those settings, I had to flash the uh, Razer Phones APK into the OnePlus 8 Pro just to uh, see any difference. And with Dolby Atmos off, there is kind of a drop in loudness and that punchiness. Uh, but other than that, that's basically what it is. That's Dolby Atmos on smartphones is basically an equalizer. Remember Beats Audio? Uh, it used to be shipped way back in 2013, 2014 with the HTC One M7 and HTC One M8 and it was so overhyped and it was basically an equalizer. And that's, that's, that's the uh, weird truth now. Dolby Atmos is basically the new Beats Audio. But you know what's the fun part? iPhones actually do Dolby Atmos, right? Yeah. Now, remember when I was telling you that MacBooks have virtualizers built into them at an operating system level? I was not kidding. I mean, Dolby Atmos and all of Dolby's codecs are natively supported by macOS in their core audio framework, which means that they can developers can use that core audio API and implement that into their apps. And the same thing extends for iPhones and iOS as well. With iPhone 11, Apple brought that virtualizer into the iPhone itself and you can enjoy spatial audio, Dolby Atmos sound within your phone. And I haven't tried that, but I really want to try it and that's going to be soon. 
but that's actually the way to do it. And because of that OS level implementation, that they are able to bring that spatial audio uh, experience to the AirPods itself, which is awesome. And when I first saw that animation, that graphic in the WWDC keynote, I was just, I, I really want that. I really want to experience that. So yeah, that's basically it. It was an exhaustive video, uh, but yeah, TLDW, Dolby's marketing and branding is confusing slash misleading. Dolby Atmos for smartphones, Android smartphones is basically a gimmick. It's an equalizer. If you want the Dolby Atmos experience on something which is not a home theater setup, get an Apple product. And Netflix, please, please add Dolby Atmos support for iPhones and Android if you can. But yeah. That's basically it. I don't know what's the point of this video. I'm, I'm not really sure who's going to watch it. Uh, this is such a niche video. And thank you so much for watching and listening me just channeling out my obsession. And uh, to tell you how obsessed I am, this video is actually mastered in 5.1 Dolby Digital Plus. <sighs> yeah. I'm a nerd after all. So yeah, if you're as crazy as me, if you've made it this far, about this pointless topic. If you like talking about pointless nerdy things like me, uh, feel free to subscribe, feel free to like this video and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Cheers.